Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Cronia region. My Fakemon region, based on Scotland with a pinch of Canada. And yes, this is the map. This is what the region that I've been talking about for about a year and a half looks like. And it mostly looks like Scotland. It's largely because Cronio is, for all intents and purposes, Scotland as a Pokemon region. But as a lot of impatient and stick in the mud commenters keep pointing out, we had the Crown Tundra. You know, as if a few Pokemon and a bit of snow is enough to represent my country. But it does admittedly represent it to some degree. So I thought, what would work to justify a Scotland region that isn't on the Isles of the Galar region? And then it hit me. Nova Scotia in Canada is essentially called New Scotland. So I came up with the idea that Cronio is a region settled by travellers coming from the Crown Tundra, which they have called the New Crown Tundra, or Neo Crown Tundra which I combined to form the name Cronio. But yeah, this is essentially Scotland properly. Maybe in the future I could do a dedicated Canada region. That could bring back the Canadian mon I made for Cronio's decks. But anyways, now that I've dressed the important backstory, let's see what elements of Scotland I decided to adapt into this map. But not before giving thanks to the artist that I commissioned for the map. Platilia decks on Instagram. I think they did an amazing job, as you will see. I also wanted to thank my friend Elium, the self-proclaimed Discord Goblin, as they helped me name most of the towns and other areas in Cronio. Not all, but quite a few of them. They also helped me with a number of dex entries you can see on my Instagram. Let's start where the player would start and finish their journey. Gosfort. I just felt like having a city that was the start of your journey and the end of your journey felt nice and circular, as a lot of the Pokemon leagues are actually relatively close to where you start out, so I just decided to merge them together. In the spirit of that, it is based on both Glasgow and Edinburgh, which is due to me not being able to decide which city should house the league. So I decided both! Many of the buildings are based on some from both cities. Most notably, Professor Barclay's lab is based based on Glasgow Cathedral, and the Pokemon League's tower is based on the Scottish Parliament buildings in Edinburgh. The name of this town comes from distorting Glasgow, as well as Edinburgh's name being rumoured to mean Edwin's Fort. As you head north to start your journey, you have the choice of entering the Fluorescent Forest. Inspired by the Glimwood Tangle, as well as similarly enchanted forests in other Fakemon regions, the Fluorescent Forest exists to house the more mystical Pokemon found in the region. The eastern portion, which is the portion you'd enter at the start of the game, houses early game Pokemon. It is your standard forest area. As for your other early route areas, Gosfort also leads out to Gosfortshire. Along the way, there is a bridge based on the fourth bridge that leads into Edinburgh, although this one is much smaller. You can even find the daycare here, where you can collect a regional variant of a Kanto starter if you want one. You can also find the Aberlachy Lakefront, as well as its lake, alongside many coastlines, where you can find many early water-type Pokémon, maybe even a Tadsol or two. Think of Gosfortshire as all of the early routes you could think of smushed into one big open area. According to the British Library, a Shire is a division of land governed by a Sheriff, whose name derives from Shire. So Gosfortshire is the Shire of Gosfort. One of the many places you could venture to from Gosfortshire is the Zeninsula, where you'd eventually encounter the box art legend Pokemon. It is an array of crystal pillars made of time energy, similar to the crystals on Priterate, Mebicordian, and Orpetheagal. These pillars are meant to represent the Kalanay standing stones in the Isle of Lewis. The name is essentially a fusion of Zen and Peninsula, as I was originally going to call it the Zen Peninsula, since it is a peninsula and the adjective Zen means a state of calm, which is what the crystals in the Zeninsula is meant to give people. Moving anti clock Likewise, we also see the town of Bayhaven. I've always found coastal towns inviting, as that's where I've mainly grown up. So Bayhaven is meant to be that feeling translated into a Pokemon town. The gym is based on Donotar Castle. And yes, all of the gyms will be castles. Some of them are based on real castles, some of them have some more creative liberties to their design. Said gym is also where the fire gym leader, Charlotte, is battled. The beach next to Bayhaven is called the Silver Sands. Bay Based on places in Scotland that are known as Silver Sands, which I decided to make more literal here. In this location, 
location, there's also a cave to nab some early game cave Pokemon, as well as some others which evolve into Pokemon new to Cronia. The name comes from Bay, as it is near the sea, and Haven, a place of safety. It's also named after Stonehaven, where Donostra Castle is located. Moving on up is Bloomborough. It's also not based on anywhere specific. It's where Cronia's farming community live, since Scotland has a strong farming community, with three quarters of Scotland's land serving the purposes of agriculture, according to Nature Scott. It's also meant to be the de facto rural town of the region. The gym is based on Balmoral Castle, as I felt like it looked like a good inspiration for a grass type gym. And it has historical significance, as not only did the late Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom and its territories like spending time here, it was also her chosen place to pass on. Scotland is part of the UK itself, and she chose to die here, so that's the connection. You fight the grass gym leader, Fig, here. The name comes from Bloom, which is what plants do, and Borough, which is a suffix that a lot of Scottish towns have. North of that is Aberlachie, which is based on the city of Aberdeen, the third largest in Scotland. Its name comes from Aberdeen, and a corruption of the word lake. Also, for the record, if ever I am making a portmanteau of a real place name and some other word, I am taking into account the etymology of the place name, so that the place that it inspires has a similar etymology to it as well. To make it a bit more immersive, Aberdeen is known as the Granite City. It is characterised by having buildings so grey, that the Tetris movie filmed there to double as Soviet Russia. Some buildings are maintained and clean, like the local government building Marshall College, which I have decided to adapt into Aberlachie's gym castle. I even included the fountain in front of Marshall College. Pike can be faced here. This will also be where Cronio's fishing community live, due to it being the home of the water gym, as well as the fact that the surrounding area in Scotland, known as Aberdeenshire, has a lot of fish. Fishers. Unfortunately, the northeast of Scotland is also known for big business in the oil and gas sector, with Nature Scott reporting Scotland as the biggest oil producer in Europe, with 196,000 people working in the industry. Oil and gas companies basically think their ridiculous profits are more important than people's comforts and especially the literal survival of the world. The North Sea is a popular area for oil refining. Also, Oil spills are bad. They pollute the local ocean and wildlife within it, damaging ecosystems, even though the oil didn't burn up into our atmosphere. So the abandoned rig is here to remind us that the oil industry is bad. It's also an optional area. Moving on north, the Isle of Snow has its landmass based on the Isle of Skye in Scotland, except I moved it to the east of the map as I felt like having a tundra setting here made sense to get a bunch of ice types which would fit at this point in the game. You may have spotted a cave here in the Isle of Snow. Don't get too excited, but it is a location that houses the Icy Rock, where you could evolve Eevee into Glaceon if you so wish. The Ice Stone will still work. There's also a town here called New Freezington, since the original settlers who came to what is now known as Cronio came from the Crown Tundra. I just felt like referencing the only town in the so-called Scotland area. It has a castle based on the cool library building at the University of Aberdeen. It would be home to the ice gym, but in this league cycle, ice was left out. The islands nearby are known as the Luring Islands, named after Chandelure, due to the fact that one has a lighthouse, which Cronin Chandelure is based on. When you get back to land again, it will be in the town of Azamori. Azamori is the town where Ant or Lily is the gym leader. All of the colourful buildings are based on the Scottish children's show Balamori, which even had a character. Archie, who lived in a pink castle. The show was mostly filmed in a real Scottish town called Tobermory, in the Isle of Mull, while the castle was filmed in East Lothian. These colourful houses felt perfect to reference Pride, with the castle now sporting blue and white as well to reference the transgender flag, due to the Cronia region having a lot of LGBT plus rep, including the gym leaders of this very town who are trans. As you could guess, Azamori is named after Balamor. 
Mori. The last five letters fit the theme of love and acceptance. But the as bit both refers to azure, which is a colour which makes sense in a town with colourful houses, but also they are the first and last letters of the alphabet. Due to LGBT plus having an assortment of letters within its name, and any letter from A to Z, or A to Z, whatever, is a valid way to feel. Once you're done here, you can head on over onto the Brigo Mori, which is a bridge. Both of the big bridges in Cronio are referred to as Brig O something. It just felt right. It is named as such due to being near Azamori. It is based on the Glenfinnan Viaduct, a famous Scottish bridge which has appeared in those wizard movies. It had to appear due to its iconography. Another iconic Scottish landmark is the Falkirk Wheel, which the Brig O New, named due to its proximity to the town of Aldenew in Cronio, is based on. It works both as a water route and an area which felt like it made sense to house the magnetic field, which evolves Chargerbug and Magneton into Vicavolt and Magnazone, respectively. The final segment spins around to change your level of elevation, much like the real-life Falkirk wheel. Old and New isn't based on anywhere in specific. It exists to show Cronio's themes of past and future, by combining old-timey aesthetics with modern ones, even with having a gym castle that fuses those aesthetics. Anastasia, or or Maxwell can be fought here. There is one connection to Scotland here, which is an adaptation of a statue called the Kelpies. Since they depict the eponymous myth, I decided to make these statues light up with neon light to continue the town's theme of old and new. I also swapped out the Kelpies for a Cronian Substriker, based on Kelpies itself, and Doomsdale, based on the Knuckleavy, which is a Scottish demon. Another area is called the Northlands. Evident named after and based on the Highlands. Since the Scottish Highlands is iconic in itself, the northern area is based on it. It is an open area similar to that of Gosfordshire. The Highlands are famous for their hills and mountains, so I just let the landscape speak for itself. The Moss Rock can be found here. Speaking of mountains, Ben Cairn is the stand-in for Ben Nevis, Scotland's highest mountain. It is named after the Cairngorm Gemstone, Scotland's national gemstone, which itself shares its name with the Cairngorms, a mountain range in Scotland. It is also named after Cairns, which are piles of rocks. There is an entrance at the top, because I wanted to add a fantasy element to that location. That of a town inside the mountain. The town is just called Ben Cairn. Because I thought it would be cool to have a town inside a mountain. Just imagine, buildings inside caves. How cool is that? The gems at the bottom of the outside are actually the gym castle poking out, also acting as the exit. The gemstones are the same colour as the Cairngorm gemstone. Jasper is the gym leader here. Also, you get a good view of Loch Prass at the top and at the bottom. Speaking of Loch Prass, I had to include a Loch Ness area, which over the course of the project I debated on what to name it, and I finally decided on Loch Prass. This would be the largest area to find aquatic Pokemon, as well as where you take your paddock to evolve into Nescade. As the name may suggest, you can also encounter a shiny Lapras here, both to reference the shiny Gyarados in Johto, as well as Nessie. I decided on a shiny Lapras and not a shiny Nescade due to the Nescade line appearing on Pike's team. Much like in Paldea, Cronio has ruins. This isn't just because Scotland has a lot of castles, but because a lot of Cronio's new Pokemon fit being encountered here. These ruins are only called the Westwake Ruins, due to being in the west and on the coast. If you collect all of the stray wisps you can encounter on your journey, because yes, you can do that, you'll be able to encounter and obtain an Ooh, in Westwake Ruins. The island nearby is also called Westwake Island. Moving on south, we have Zampeton, which is based on St. Andrews, a town in Scotland that houses a university which inspired the gym where you face Sonny, but also where his biggest hobby outside of battling originated in the real world. That hobby is Scotland's national sport, golf. Its odd name essentially means champion town, while also beginning with 
X, since the St Andrew's Cross is the one depicted on the Scottish flag, and what partially inspired the X Bill line, which also begins with an X. So I decided to make it match. There is also a bridge leading towards the fluorescent forest based on the iconic Swillicum Bridge in St Andrew's Links Golf Course. Speaking of the fluorescent forest, let's get back to it. The western part of the fluorescent forest houses stronger Pokemon of a mystical variety, including some fairy type Pokemon, to deal with the upcoming Dark Gym Leader. Although, your playthrough could have had Brook already be fired, but luckily, either way, there are still some counters for flying type Pokemon in here as well. Originally, the fluorescent forest was going to be two forests, with this west one being the mystical one. But since both felt like they could work as a mystical forest, and they were close together due to one being near the start of the adventure and one being near the end, and the start and the end of the adventure being the same place, it made sense to fuse them. The final town I'll be covering is the town where you'd be facing your eighth gym battle, Dunport, which is based on Dundee, the fourth largest city in Scotland also known as Scotland's sunniest city. We don't get much sun, I think this might be a joke. Its name is a combination of Dundee and Port, because it's a portside town. The gym is based on Victorian Albert Dundee, also known as V&A Dundee, which is a design museum. This is because I just thought the building looked cool from the outside. In this town, there's also a monument similar to Dundee's War Memorial. It leads you to a road that takes you to Gosfort, where you would then face the League. I call this road a Victory Road. I know, very creative on my part. And that's Coronio's map. I hope it was worth the wait. I also hope you realise that not all Pokemon maps are one-to-one -one with their original basis. I mean, Spain doesn't have a crater in the middle of it, unless if you're being really unflattering about Madrid. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe, comment down below what your favourite town is, and check out my Instagram and Discord in the description. If you want to go the extra mile and support the channel, why not join my Patreon and become a member today? This is completely optional, but please consider it if you are able to. With all that said, see you next time. Cheerio!